Fred? Fred, who's that man? Huh? That man in the guest room. Mary, what are you talking about? There's a strange man asleep in our guest room. <laughs> Theater 5 presents The Stranger. You nearly dressed, Fred? Oh, give me another minute or a half an hour or something. Well... The bathroom's ready for you. I'll go down and make breakfast. Okay. Say, how about making me some sausage this morning? All right. Give me some men who are stout-hearted men who will fight for the right thing and all. Shoulder to shoulder and bolder. Fred! Huh? What is it? Fred? Who's that man? What? That man in the guest room. Mary, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the man in the guest room. Maybe all right, but I should think you would have told me you brought someone home with you last night. Wait a minute. When what? I think of it, I went right past the guest room door, practically undressed this Mary, night. will you stop talking and let me get a word in? Are you telling me there's somebody in the guest room? Yes. A, a man? Yes. Well, I didn't bring any man home with me last night. But well, where did this man come from? What, what time did you get in last night? I don't know, 11.30, I guess. And the guest room was empty then? I don't think I looked into it. Well, I got home about 1.30 and... No, I, I guess I didn't look into the guest room either. Th this man in the guest room, wh what's he doing? He's lying in bed, apparently fast asleep. Well, I think we just better wake him up. W w what if he has a gun? Oh, Mary, don't be ridiculous. Come on. Fred, I'm afraid. Oh, honey, look, don't worry. We'll turn this guy out of the house or over to the police or whatever. No, no, no look reason. reason. He's still asleep. Mm. Hey. Hey, you. Come on, wake up. Wake up. The party's over. Oh, oh. oh. Good, good morning, Fred. Good morning, Barry. Who are you? Well, don't you know? Of course he doesn't know, and neither do I. Who are you? He, you don't know either? No, I don't. Well, this is a pretty situation. Look, stop stalling and get out of that bed. I'm not stalling. I I'm trying to figure out what to do. No, I just bet you are. Oh, what the devil? I'm not going to take the rap. I'm going to tell the truth. We'd like to hear it. All right. Now, last night was your bridge night, wasn't it, Mary? How did you know that? And it was your bowling night, Fred. Isn't that right? That's right, and I don't know how you knew it, but it's got nothing to do with the it's fact that you everything broke into to do our with house. My presence here, and I didn't break into your house. This is a very delicate situation. Mary's bridge night, Fred's bowling night, but... Well, let me put it this way. One of you is putting me in a most embarrassing position because, you see, one of you didn't go bowling or bridge playing. And that one brought me home and invited me to stay a week. What are you talking about? I was invited to stay here in this house for one week by one of you. He or she seems to have changed his or her mind. I went bowling last night, and I never saw you before in my life. I played bridge last night, and I never saw you before either. You see? One of you is lying. <laughs> well, that's imp... Uh-huh. It gives us all something to think about. Doesn't it? Look here, if you are suggesting that my you wife... You tell me that my husband... One of you was very clever to say what you just said. Still, it's going to be a strain, isn't it, to keep it up. I tell you what, I have a suggestion. What is it? Well, it's born of the fact that I'm hungry. Why don't we talk this over at breakfast like sensible, civilized people? You've got a nerve. You are going to give me some breakfast, aren't you? Mary, I think we ought to. It'll give us a little time to think. Now, look, there. you go on downstairs. I'll stay here with this character while he gets dressed. More coffee? Oh, thank you. I will, yes. Are you ready to talk now? Well, I really told you all I have to say. Oh, this is good coffee, Mary. So glad you like it. 
I'm willing to answer questions if you have any. All right. Now, you say one of us brought you home last night. Which one? Now, that's the question I'm not going to answer. Why not? Well, the person who brought me home doesn't want his or her husband or wife to know where he or she was last night. And you know what? On reflection, I can see why. This is ridiculous. Of course it is. You came home about 11.30, right? Yes. And I got home about 1.30. And by that time, Mary was asleep. Now, where does that get either of you? Well, I've got a question. According to your story, you knew one of us, only one of us. But when you woke up this morning, you called us both by name. Now, how do you account for that? The person I was with last night talked about the person he or she was married to. As a matter of fact, under the circumstances, it was quite natural to do so. What circumstances? One of you knows very well what circumstances, and the other will have to guess. Fred, were you with your bowling team last night? Yes. How about you? I played bridge at Agatha's house. That's what you say. What do you mean by that? I mean that's what you say. He says differently. No, he doesn't. He says differently about you. Oh, this is great. This is. I've been reading for years about the kind of thing that goes on in the suburbs, the discontented wives. The philandering husband. And I'll tell you the truth. I honestly didn't think it applied to this suburb, or at least to this house in this suburb. What are you trying to pretend, Fred? That I've ha had an affair? I don't know what has happened, but I know I'm going to find out one thing. What's Agatha's phone number? SC44099. What do you think you're going to find out? I am just going to get a couple of things straightened out. Believe me, it's time we got the cards out on the table. Now, we'll just find out. What... Hello, Agatha. Uh, this is Fred Denton. Uh, Agatha, Mary has gone out this morning, and I can't find a little black notebook that she was carrying for me last night. I, I wonder if she left it at your house. Oh, I see. What? She, she was there, wasn't she? She was either supposed to go to your house or... Oh, oh yeah, that's right. It, it, it was bridge night. Okay, well, uh, the notebook will probably turn up. Thanks, Agatha. Bye. Give me that phone. And what do you think you're doing? <laughs> never you mind. You just never mind. Don't think you're the only one that can go around checking up on things. Well, the... Uh, hello? Uh, Harry? Well, this is Mary. Listen, Harry, uh, confidentially... What is the best bowling score my husband ever had? Oh, I see. Well, he hasn't been bragging then. Uh, what did he bowl the last time? Oh, that's right. It was last night, wasn't it? And no, I just didn't think he was that good, and I've been kidding him. Well, thank you, Harry. Bye. Mary? Yes, Fred. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed, too. Of course, either Agatha or Harry was fixed beforehand. You shut up! All right, if you want me to. I trust my wife implicitly. That's and splendid. I trust my husband. Admirable. What is your game, anyhow? It doesn't seem to do much good for me to tell the truth to you people. You're going to tell the truth before I get through with you. You bet you are coming in here and upsetting us this way. Now, you've had your breakfast, and you probably think you're going to leave now. Well, you're not. You're going to stay in this house until we get to the bottom of all this. Of course I am. I've been invited for a week. May I come in, Fred? Sure. Where is he? He's sitting on our sun porch as if he owned it, reading one of our books. Well... I wouldn't have let it go on this way if it weren't that I run the business from home here. I should hope not. I wouldn't want to be alone with him. But in all of these days, what is it, three or four days, we haven't found out a thing. Well, we found out his name is Bert. If it is his name. Well, he's just been divorced and has no place to go. Yeah, if he was ever married, which, frankly, I doubt. Mm. Or do you find him attractive, Mary? What do you mean by that? Hang it all. I just want to know why he is here. Because you told him he couldn't leave. Which fitted in perfectly with his plan. Oh, this is too much. Look, I'm going to see that guy. You stay here. I want to talk with him alone. No, and it's not what you're thinking. I didn't say a word, did I? You looked. Go ahead. Go and talk to him. Whatever you have to say. Well, Bert. 
Taking your ease on my sun porch, I see. Oh, just a moment, Fred. Wait until I finish this paragraph, will you? Oh, I won't wait. Wait. Well, you're pretty hopped up. You bet I am. Why are you causing trouble around here? Am I? You know you are, and you're enjoying it, too. Well, why not? I'm a student of human nature. I've had enough. Now, let's see you smile after that. Or that. Stop it. Stop it. All right. Your husband has a cut on his cheek. You better fix it. I'll give you more than that. I said stop it. What are you doing here anyway, Mary? I told you I wanted to talk to him alone. If you want to know, I was in the dining room listening. Oh, you were? Well, then, if you were listening, you now know this character and I never saw each other before. No, I don't. Anything you said to each other can be taken either way. Either he came home with you that night, or you have no idea who he is. Nothing you said told me a thing. <laughs> Think back on the conversation, Fred. She's right. Nobody knows any more now than you did that morning you found me here. Still and all, in view of the fact that we've had this fight, I'll go or I'll stay, just as you please. If I leave now, You'll never see me again. And you'll never know, will you? So, shall I go? Stay. Stay. <laughs> <laughs> Control. Everything's under control, including dinner. Oh, is it really that way? Mm -hmm. I've been catching up on some work I should have done earlier this week. Well, dinner's ready. Uh, and uh, our guest? Upstairs. Do you know, Mary, we haven't said a single thing about why Bert is here or that fantastic story he gave us or, or anything at all since he and I had that fight. I know. Of course, I don't know what you're saying to him while I'm here in the office. Now, Fred, I thought we agreed we would just forget those suspicions. Oh, I didn't mean it that way, honey. What I mean is it's it, it's it's actually been kind of pleasant since the fight. Well, I hate to agree, but that's true. It's been as if you were, I don't know... One of the family. That's right. It's all wrong, of course. <laughs> I know. The truth of the matter is that... Uh, since the fight, we've all been getting along beautifully, and we haven't found out a thing. Well, it's just been easier for us to be pleasant, because we're pleasant suburban people. That's what I mean. And you know something, Fred. What? This is our last chance. What do you mean? He was going to stay a week. At 1.30 tomorrow night, that week is over. At 11.30 tomorrow oh, night. Oh, no, please, Fred. Well, sometime tomorrow night. Yes. All right, we've got a little more than 24 hours to find out all about this man and what he's been up to, all right? Now, is dinner ready? Yes. Okay, come on. And let's make it a pretty tough dinner for him. <laughs> Mary, you couldn't have pleased me more. I love goulash. Well, I'm glad. Look here, my friend. You have been here now almost a week. You know, I was thinking of that myself. I'm going to miss you two people. Well, we are not going to miss you. Oh, now, I take offense at that. I really believed you, Fred. I think tonight would be an excellent time for you to explain yourself, Bert. You mean speak right out in public and tell you who... Brought me here last week? Either that or what joke you're playing. Oh, no, I couldn't be that cruel to you. It, it would be better, wouldn't it? Uh, for you to think in the years to come that possibly I was just kidding. What we want from you right now, Bert, is the truth. I've never told you anything else. The whole truth. How long do you cook the noodles? The whole truth and now. My week is up tomorrow night. I suppose I can see your point of view, but... Uh, well, it isn't always wise to insist on knowing things that might hurt Will you. Will you stop all that nonsense and just tell us what you have to tell us? I was going to say it isn't always wise. But if people insist on knowing, they usually can find out. So? We have more than 24 hours. Now, I don't want to ruin an excellent meal, but uh, I can give you a promise. What is it? Well... I arrived in this house sometime between 11.30 and 1.30 a week ago tomorrow night. By tomorrow night, 
At that time, you, Fred, and you, Mary, won't have any further doubt. Look, you, I want an answer from you, and I want it now. Well, you're not going to get it. Stand up. Oh, oh, oh. Now, wait a minute. Now, what do you tell us what's going stop on it, here? Stop him. You, Are you going to tell Fred, me? Fred, stop it. Don't hit him. All I've... right, Mary. Now, look, I've said all I've had to say. And you listen to me, you two. Tomorrow night, both of you will be quite certain that you know the truth. Well, no, I, I've been here in the office since 7 a.m. Why? Well, I went to call him for breakfast, and Freddy's gone. What do you mean? He's nowhere in this house. Let me look. I tell you, I've looked everywhere. I don't doubt it. And I've called him and called him. I tell you, he's gone. I'm sure he's gone, but what I want to see Perhaps is... Let's go to see if his clothes are there. It's not his clothes I'm interested in. Mary, where's my watch? Well, how should I know? I left it here on this bureau... Exactly. Where are you going? To check on other things. What other things? The silverware, for one oh, thing. Fred. Gone. Oh, this is awful. We have been the prize suckers, the prize fools. Fred. What? Look, the Ming vase is gone. Sit down. Let's not look any further. I'm sure every small object we've got that's worth anything is gone. Oh. 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 <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, darling, you know it's not awful at all. Don't you see? It's over. Over. Oh. oh. Yes. Yes, Fred, you're right. Yes, it's over. <laughs> Ah, oh, darling, if oh. I could only tell you the suspicions I had of you. Well, I had the same suspicions of you. Ah, <laughs> oh, darling, it's just wonderful. Let him have the stuff. He was nothing but a burglar. A confidence man, a racketeer. Oh, darling. Oh, Mary, my love. <laughs> hey, you think we ought to report this to the police? Well, I hadn't thought about it. What do you think? Oh, I don't suppose they could get any of that stuff back for us. No. Still. No. Maybe you're right. It wouldn't be wise to report it. Well, I, I, I didn't say we shouldn't report it. I... Well, of course you did. Mercy, do you think I have anything to fear from reporting this? Well, does that mean you think I have? Now, Fred, let's not quarrel. Well, you said that... No. No. <laughs> Let's not quarrel. Well, will we report it to the police? Well, I'll leave it to you. It might make us a laughing stock. That's true. Yeah. That... Oh, look, we, we don't have to spar around this way as if we were still suspicious of one another. No. Why don't we just decide not to report it and, and agree that this is the decision of both of us? That's much the best way. Let's just... Put aside all doubts of one another. Yes. Just say, I love you. I love you. And I love you. And we can prove it too, Fred, this very night. No doubts, no suspicions. This is your bowling night and my bridge night. Hey, that's right. You go to your bridge and I'll go to my bowling. And we'll just forget the whole ridiculous business. <laughs> I love you, Mary. And I love you, Fred. But I'm not going to my bridge party. There's a drugstore across from the bowling alley, and I'm going to be there in the window with an ice cream soda, seeing whether he goes bowling or not. And if he checks me, it will be easy to get the girls to say that I was playing bridge. No bowling for me. I'll be in the bushes opposite Agatha's house. The guys will cover for me in case she checks. I'm going to find out about her for certain one way I or the... love Fred, but he's not going to make a fool of me. She is the greatest girl in the world, but if she's putting anything over on me, I'm going to find out. Theater 5 
has presented The Stranger, written by Robert Senadella and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, Elliot Reed, Elspeth Eric, and James Monks. Audio engineer, Bill Sandreuter. Sound technician, M.C. Brock. Script editor, Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlastatsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.